So this is the final video in our Sonos driver series. Uh, this time we're going to demonstrate the functionality of our Sonos single zone controller and virtual matrix. So as before, the first step is to add in the driver. So we go to add new zone controller. Then we navigate down to find Sonos. So there it is, our Sonos single zone controller and virtual matrix. And we click OK. Uh, as before, if this wasn't showing up, we literally click search folder. Then once we're in that search folder, we navigate to the folder where we've got the driver stored and uh, select it. Uh, but it's showing up here anyway, so we click OK and OK again. And uh, the driver will add into a LAN. So now that that driver's uh, appeared up in here, our first step is to get it activated. So we're able to actually use the features and functions of it. So you enter the activation key that you're provided with. Again, if you've not got one, just drop us an email and we'll be able to sort one out for you. And uh, we click apply and get that stored in. And once that's been accepted, we click activate. And that's the driver activated. It's a one-time process and the driver will automatically check and remember for that uh, going forwards. Uh, to be able to control our Sonos player, we need to put in the RP address. So that's the RP address of our Sonos Connect Amp. In this particular instance, it's 1.53. And so we click Apply, uh, just so that that's stored in there. And the main difference that we have here between our normal single zone controller and our virtual matrix are these three extra boxes here, global feed one, two, and three. And what the virtual matrix enables us to do is to take the auxiliary input of another Sonos player and to play out of the Sonos player which we're controlling. So in this instance, we're going to take, uh, we're going to control music source two, uh, which is a Sonos Connect amp, which might be located in a room on its own, for instance. And we're going to take the auxiliary input of music source one. Now where this could come useful, for instance, will be where you don't have a matrix amplifier and you've got multiple Sonos players throughout a house. And obviously you're going to want to do a whole house functionality. And so if you have a Sonos player plugged into the auxiliary input, for instance, of uh, one of these other Sonoses, we're able to pipe that music throughout. Or similarly, you might have a, uh, a local TV plugged into that Sonos and you need to pipe the audio out in a different room. Uh, this virtual matrix gives us that functionality. And all we have to do to do that is enter the MAC address of the Sonos of who we want to take the auxiliary input from. So in this instance, we're going to set up global feed one and we're going to put this in. This is the MAC address of our music source one. So we have to remove the separators. So we just have the pure hex of the, uh, of the MAC address and then click apply so that that's all saved. And in terms of our setup, we select music source two because that's the uh, that's the amp we're controlling and then for our virtual feed one I'm just going to select music source 2 um, and I will call that auxiliary in uh, from music source 1 just so we're aware just for a little bit of clarity um, and we'll give the zone a specific name that's clear for us here so Sonos test in this instance I'll just add that to an interface so we can view it and then if we open up viewer pop over to media and Sonos test you see we've got the music source 2 which is the Sonos connect amp we're controlling and auxiliary in which is the auxiliary in from music source 1 so going to music source 2 just gives us our standard Sonos interface uh, which we can play and we can control with uh, just as we would normally uh, as we have here um, 
as we showed in the other video, I'll just drag this over to the to the side just so we can see a little bit clearer. There we go. Um, if we send commands from here, it will mute and unmute. The volume ramping is absolute, so Sonos always follows whatever it is that we're doing in a LAN. Uh, so that the two always marry up. Um, if we go to favorites that we might have on here, radio two, press play and play now. Uh, this part is just using the normal Sonos driver in the LAN. As you can see, that's all fired up, that's working, proper two way communication. Um, but now, for instance, if we wanted to listen to the auxiliary in, which is plugged into Music Player 1, this first one up here, we literally change the source. So, selecting this, the auxiliary in, you'll notice it now displays no music on here because it's pumping through the auxiliary from this other Sonos. So, physically out in the room now, we can hear that music. Um, we've built into the driver uh, a little feature uh, which is a known issue sometimes when doing this in Sonos whereby when you change back to our normal source, so music source 2, the auxiliary music can sometimes continue to play. So we've built into this driver a specific feature to stop that from happening. So. Uh, unfortunately, with this not having the music pumping into this video, uh, you can't hear what's happening, but that's essentially now stopped any existing music and is completely refreshed back to this stage again. So we could repeat the same uh, steps again. Go to our favourites, select our radio 2 and play now, and you'll see in the Sonos app that's now updated and that in reality we'll be playing out in the room uh, directly from that connect amp again. Uh, as always with any of these things if you've got any questions please feel free to drop us an email at elan at coreprogramming.co.uk or visit our website www.coreprogramming.co.uk